Hello everyone, Belly Tub here, and welcome back to Dauntless. The first video that we released of the game here on the channel was pretty well received. Since then, there has been a massive patch to the beta, and as a result, they went ahead and wiped everyone's progress as well. So everyone's had to start from scratch. As a result, there are a couple weapons that are gated behind Weapon Master Reputation. And these are weapons that the community had given a lot of feedback on to the developers, that uh, they had a, a, a bad time using when they first started out. When they were new to the game, they found less enjoyment in these weapons, and they were less likely to continue playing as a result. So, the axe is, is locked behind level two with the Weapon Master, and my favorite weapon in the game, the War Pike, is locked behind level four right now. There's been a lot of feedback about this, so hopefully they'll be unlocked again soon, but, it has allowed me to spend a lot more time with the sword. I've progressed all the way through Torment 4. I guess it's not Torment, it's Tier. I don't know where that came from. Too much Diablo recently. Tier 4, uh, while using a weapon that I never really used before. I pretty much dropped the sword right after the tutorial my first time through the beta. But if you're looking for some tips with the bladed sword, uh, then I can definitely give you some as I've been spending a lot of time with it over the last few days. So think of this as a beginner's guide. If you're gonna be coming into Dauntless when the game officially launches or during the next open beta phase, which is gonna be coming up pretty soon, then this will give you a little bit of information so you can start honing your skills a little bit faster than everyone else that's just learning from the beginning. So let's go ahead and go up against an easy enemy and I can teach you the basics of the sword. Yeah, look at that intro. I bought that in the store and I don't regret it one bit. So the sword on the base level is super easy to use. It mixes good damage with good mobility, and that mobility is more important in most cases than the damage you're actually gonna do. So before we even go over any of the sword combos at all, I wanna get your head in the right place. If you're jumping into Dauntless for the first time, dodging mechanics is the most important part. If you see an attack coming, you need to be able to get under that attack. By the way, Aetherwiz can make you move faster. You need to get under that attack to dodge that damage so your character isn't just taken down in a few hits. So keep that in mind as we're going forward. If we go ahead and hold down tab on the keyboard, we can see all of our combos. This is information that you all have, but I wanna give my input on some of this. So the quad cross, your most basic combo, four fast auto attacks. Actually allows your character to hit five times, even though it's only four swings. It is my bread and butter. And the main reason for that is because I can cancel this whenever I want to, aside from that fourth attack, which is a double animation, right? I can cancel this whenever I want to, to roll out of the way, which is super important if we actually want to stay alive long enough to kill the behemoth. Now you could say, well, you could just walk away and then let it do its attack and then come back in, but that's where the beauty of the sword is. Because of the immunity frames that your roll gives you, you can dance around a boss and it won't know what to do. You'll be cutting it into pieces before it can even think about its next attack. And that is what this weapon does better than the hammer and the ax. Even though those weapons can arguably deal more damage, you can have more damage uptime with the sword if you're able to dodge around adequately. Now, the triple elements is actually really hard to show off with this weapon because it has so many particle effects all the time. But the triple L elements is just starting with the same combo, so three auto attacks. Uh, but the quad cross, there's like a moment where it like pauses there and you decide you want to go for that last attack there. Well, there's a moment where you can decide to go into the heavy attack as well. And that will deal more damage, but it takes longer. The repeating elements, I like to think of it as like you're robbing a bank. And that may sound like a weird analogy right now. But again, there is an audio and a visual cue. Oh, you kind of saw the flash there. Okay. It was there at the end. I'll slow it down. Let's go back. Let's look at the flash. There is a audio, uh, audio and visual cue for when you can actually start the combo. You need to wait for your weapon to shimmer. And this will generate your special so fast. It'll charge your weapon so fast. But again, the problem is that you're gonna find yourself in a position 
where you're not going to have any stamina because every single one, excuse me, here we go. Every single one of these attacks is draining your stamina if you look up at the top. And if you don't have stamina, you can't roll. So you're going to be beat up by a boss. You can only want to use the repeating elements if a boss is stunned, knocked out, or shocked, right? Any, any of those. Any of those, and it's fine. And then the rising elements, which is just a few right clicks. The only time I ever use this is if I see a boss is dizzy. If I see those swirls around its head and I know it's going to be knocked out soon, I'll roll into the front of the boss and start doing these attacks. But the combat roll of the sword is so important because you can open up into whatever combo you want. So let's say I wanted to do my quad cross. Just roll. Here's my four auto attacks. Or let's say I want to do some heavy damage. I see the bot, this this rock here. Let's say this is our boss, and its head's over there. I could roll right in front and start hitting in the head, trying to knock it out. Combat roll is so important. Utilize it more than anything. Now, what I want to bring your attention to is the etheric burst and the overdrive. This is extremely misleading. Uh, the etheric burst is an attack speed and damage increase that you get for using your special. And your special is this, I don't know if that's actually what it's called, that's what I always call it. It's the, it's the sword icon underneath our health bar up at the top left. And it has five icons inside. As we're attacking our opponent, we're going to be building up these charges much more faster, much more quickly, excuse me. Uh, if you're using your fast attacks, by the way, which is why if you do decide to plant your feet with this thing, it's going to build it up super quick, super fast. But again, you can't move. Uh, so the overdrive is a projectile that you launch out of your weapon and it will deal the element that your weapon does. So because we're using an electric weapon, it's going to deal electricity. Uh, which, again, I kind of mentioned it, but it allows you to zap your enemy and you can actually stun them in place. But, here, 558 damage. That's what ours did to the tail of this Nasher. I used it at one charge. And the charges of this weapon, all they do is dictate the duration of the attack speed bonus. Not the damage of the overdrive or anything like that. Uh, so let's see if I can get behind it. Exact same damage, no matter what the charge was. The first time we used our Q, it was uh, one charge. The second time it was three charges. So that damage does not scale. The only thing that scales with our special is the attack speed duration. So what I find myself doing quite a bit is whenever I can get a few attacks in, look at that. We already have a charge of our special ready to go. Now I could just use it and cut into his tail a little bit more while I have the opportunity. After doing that, well, what do you know? I already have my special again. Now when he's thinking about his next move, we can get a couple hits in there. Roll back in, and ah, uh, you, you moved. Why'd you move? Well, we can roll back in and use our special once more. Uh, and we actually shocked him because that's the element of our weapon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my time and use the repeating elements. Now again, you can only channel that while you're standing still and while you have stamina. But I'm dedicating most of my stamina just simply rotating around our enemy. We're gonna go ahead and let him enrage here. No hard feelings, but I'd be pretty mad too if someone was in, just embarrassing me like that. So, uh, we have a lantern that we crafted. This is the charge to the left of our health and stamina bar. The one that I have crafted gives me an attack speed increase, and I like to stack that up with the effect of our super ability, of the, what is it, etheric boost. Uh, so, it means I can attack super quick, makes it so easy to cut off appendages like that. Now that we have the tail off, I'm going to start focusing on these legs. And with the sword, it can be so very easy to move from piece to piece on a monster, cutting off exactly the hide that you need, simply by using your left clicks, you know, your light attacks. There's nothing too complicated here. There's the leg, we can move on to the arm here now, try to cut into that a little bit. And you could see more and more lacerations on his body as I'm attacking. We're just going to shift over to the other side, keep our damage up, and start attacking his leg. Then when he starts to hit us with his leg, we're going to move to the other side. That was his face being cut off. So we'll move back to the leg. He's doing an attack. We'll switch right through. I might be able to get off another one in here. 
But you see what I'm saying? It's constant DPS uptime as long as you're able to learn the mechanics of the boss that you're fighting, which is kind of the whole point of the game. So I assume at some point you're going to be able to move around a boss with a little bit of elegance, with a little bit of speed. Uh, we did shock him one more time, which set me up to just start cutting into him once more, and that's going to be a dead masher in record time. Every time we cut off hide, we're going to be stunning him. Every time we shock him because of our weapon, we're going to be stunning him. We can hit him in the head and concuss him, and that's going to be an S++ rank with the sword. Now, granted, this is a super easy boss that you're going to be fighting early on, but a version of the Nasher is what you're going to be fighting when you first jump into the game. So use these tips to set yourself up for success with the sword. We're going to be taking a look at the other weapons soon, assuming you guys want to see those too. And I'm just a few kills away from unlocking the War Pike, so... Ah, oh, greater pastures await, boys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.